Hi everybody, I just wanted to present a video explaining the Unit 2 Discussion Board. Very important assignment, so I want to make sure you all understand what's expected of you. Okay, so keep in mind, folks, that there's two parts of this assignment due on two different days. The first part is going to be your initial discussion board post, which is going to be due April 12th at 11.59.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. The second part is your responses to your classmates or your peer responses, which are going to be due on Tuesday, April 16th, 11.59.59 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay, with that said, let's go forward and get into the nitty-gritty of this assignment. Okay, the initial discussion board requirements. You need to choose one, and I emphasize one of the topics listed. Okay. Use the pri using the primary source reading, answer the following questions. Use this template provided to complete this assignment. Can't emphasize this enough. Download the template. I will also be sending it to you via a CTU messenger message. Use the template as well as my grading criteria sheet that I will be going over as a blueprint for your assignment. Now, this assignment won't be so overwhelming if you take it a step at a time and break it down into the three parts. Firstly, the first part to the initial discussion board post is the context, which is worth 20 points. You name the document you chose to analyze. Okay, and you're probably thinking, well, what the heck is a primary source document? We've got to analyze a primary source document. A primary source document is a document that is, was created during the era of history you were studying. Okay, so in other words, the Declaration of Independence is a primary source document that was created during the American Revolution. Okay, um, letter from a Birmingham jail written by Dr. Martin Luther King is a primary source document in the civil rights movement. Okay, we'll get into this a little more. So the first section is the context, or 20 points. Name the document you are choosing to analyze. Who is the creator of the document? You briefly describe the creator of the document. To answer this, you might need to use information obtained from the introduction to the source or course materials like in telepath. When and where was the document created? Again, you may need to rely on information obtained from the source or course materials that can telepath. That's the first section, okay? Second section is summary, also worth 20 points. Write a brief summary of the source. What is the topic or issue being discussed in the source? What's the creator's main points about the topic? And what is one interesting thing you learned from the source? That's the summary portion. Okay, the next portion is, or next section, third section, is the connections. Also worth 20 points. Okay, how does the source help you better understand the topic um, and basically the, the unit two learning materials? How did this help you learn more about, let's say, the Cuban Missile Crisis and the unit two learning materials in general? Here you want to think about how the source fits into the materials for the unit, such as in telepath. And does the source support what you already knew about the topic, let's say the Cuban Missile Crisis or the Bay of Pigs invasion, or does the source change the way you think about this topic? If so, how? Okay, so that's the initial discussion board uh, post that you must post by the 12th. Next, what is a primary document? Very important to define a primary document. Primary document, like I said, is a document that was created during a specific era of history you are studying. Within this assignment, you're going to be asked to analyze a primary document and read it, understand the circumstances under which the document was created, and how these documents are still impacting us today. Two great websites discussing primary documents and defining them are listed, so I highly recommend perusing this. Okay, the topic list. Each one of these topics is incredibly interesting. And there is a ton of information out on each of them. So you will not have a shortage of information on any of these. Okay, you have one, two, three, four, five, six topics to choose from. Bay of Pigs. Okay, the Bay of Pigs was an invasion of Cuba by Cuban exiles. I'm going to define each of these in a moment. So, okay, hold on. Cuban Missile Crisis. Okay. Um, the Soviets were creating um, nuclear missile sites in Cuba, and the Kennedy administration had to respond. Vietnam War protests, uh, John Kerry, 
who served as our Senator for Massachusetts for many years and uh, most recently as our Secretary of State, uh, made an impassioned speech in front of Congress against the Vietnam War. Uh, women's rights movement, the founding documents of the National Organization of Women, we're going to get into this. Chicano rights movement, the influence of Cesar Chavez and the United Farm Workers Organization, we're going to get into that. Um, and Black Power, the Black Panther movement. Okay, I'm going to define each of these, but you have six of these. Okay, again, look at each of these and pick the one that you feel interests you the most. Okay, peer response. The second part of this assignment is responding to your classmates. This is due April 16th. Respond to two of your fellow classmates about their initial discussion post. To help with your discussion, please consider the following questions. Just don't leave it as, great job, John. Great job, Susie. No, I love my students and I've always loved my students and the fact that everyone is so supportive of one another and I love it, but you need to go more in depth. You need to further the conversation. Those are key words, further the conversation. You need to answer the following questions when you respond to your classmates and tailor your response to that classmate's post. So the questions you need to ask, my dear students, what did you learn from your classmates' post? Are there connections between what you learned from your source and what you learned about their source? What is one interesting thing you learned from your fellow students' post? And what clarification do you need regarding the post? Okay, you should be answering those questions in each of your responses. Okay, grading criteria. When I sit down to grade your discussion board assignment, this is what I'm the instrument I will be using to grade it. And basically, it will say, okay, context. Student identifies the creator, including a brief description. Student identifies when and where the document was created. I will put my comments, however many points, out of 20. Second portion, summary. Student fully summarizes the document, identifying the main topic, the main points, and at least one interesting detail. I will put my comments, however many points, out of 20. The third section, connections. Student identifies connection between the primary source and the unit learning materials. Student includes a discussion of how the source expanded or changed their previous knowledge. My comments, however many points out of 20. Peer response. Student responds to at least two of his or her peers. You respond to your two peers, I will give you 20 points. Response content. Peer responded, or peer response, excuse me, Add new depth or insight to the current conversation and encourages further conversation. My comments have many points out of 10. Academic writing. Student uses proper spelling, punctuation, and grammar to write clearly and effectively. References, if provided, are in APA format. My comments have many points out of 10. I total the points and put however many points you earned out of 100. Okay, so keep, use the template and use this as your blueprint while constructing this assignment. Okay, very, very, very important. Okay, so next what I'd like to do is go over each of the topics. First, here's the nitty gritty about the pertinent information. Your initial discussion board post is due April 12th by 11.59, 59 p.m. Central Standard Time, that's a Friday. Then Tuesday, April 16th, your peer responses are due by 11.59, 59 p.m. Central Standard Time. The points possible for this assignment is 100. And my email address, lbenelocarotech.edu. Please do not hesitate to ask me any questions at any time. Okay, now let's go over the individual topics, the six topics. Firstly, you have the Bay of Pigs invasion. Keep in mind a little background to the Bay of Pigs. In 1959, the Cuban Revolution brought the communist government of Fidel Castro to power. The Bay of Pigs invasion was actually planned during the administration of Dwight D. Eisenhower, our 34th President of the United States. Okay, and in fact, Kennedy found out about this plan um, by the letter that Eisenhower left on the desk the day he was inaugurated. There's a tradition, the outgoing president always leaves the incoming president a, a note, okay, and this was in Eisenhower's note to Kennedy. 
The CIA had been secretly training Cuban exiles in Guatemala to launch an invasion of Cuba. Okay, and the exiles were to land at a portion of Cuba called the Bay of Pigs. It was hoped that this invasion, which would be CIA backed, would motivate Cubans to rise up against Castro and oust him from power. Okay. April of 1961, the Bay of Pigs invasion occurred. The U.S. government was supposed to aid the exiles with two airstrikes. After the first airstrike, the involvement of the U.S. government became obvious. So Kennedy put a stop to the second airstrike. Ended up about 1,200 exiles were taken prisoner by the Cuban government and 100 were killed. The great uprising of the Cubans against the Castro government did not occur. President Kennedy negotiated the release for the imprisoned exiles. Um, very, very, very rough period in our nation's history. It's a very rough incident. Okay, the Cuban Missile Crisis is your second topic that you can go over. A little background on the Cuban Missile Crisis. October 1962, U.S. military surveillance planes had photographed nuclear missile sites being constructed by the Soviets within Cuba. The Kennedy administration was left with two options of how to handle this. So keep in mind, the Bay of Pigs invasion, April of 1961. So a year and a half later, our military surveillance planes finds out that the Soviets are constructing um, nuclear missile sites on the beaches of Cuba. Okay, so the Kennedy administration had two choices of regards to a reaction. Number one, order invasion of Cuba. Two, place a naval blockade against Cuba. Kennedy administration went with the naval blockade because it was feared that the invasion would lead to intervention by the Soviet Union. Negotiations during the Cuban Missile Crisis lasted a very tense 13 days. This is the closest we ever came to nuclear war. Very, very scary time in our nation's history. Kennedy's brother was the Attorney General, Attorney General Robert Kennedy. He wrote a book called 13 Days about his experience as a cabinet member and close advisor to President Kennedy. The Soviets ended up removing the missiles from Cuba in exchange the U.S. promised not to invade Cuba. But what is really interesting about the Cuban Missile Crisis is Something that the American public was not informed of for many, many years was the fact that in exchange for the Soviets removing the missiles from Cuba, the United States agreed to remove our missiles from Turkey and Greece. It's funny because during the Cold War, students were taught, oh yeah, during the Cuban Missile Crisis, darn it, we stared down the Soviets and they blinked and they removed those missiles. Well. In recent history, we found out that it was basically a tit-for-tat swap, okay? So anyway, very interesting topic. Okay, third topic you can go over, the Vietnam War protests. Little background on John Kerry, because this is the document you're going to be dealing with is the speech he gave in front of Congress in 1971. John Kerry gave this speech April 23rd, 1971. He was returning Vietnam. Um, veteran. He served as U.S. Senator from Massachusetts from 1985 until 2013, and he was the Democratic Party nominee for presidential candidate in 2004. He also served as Secretary of State under President Obama from 2013 until 2017. From 1966 until 1970, for four years, he was a lieutenant in the United States Navy fighting in Vietnam, and he gave this impassioned speech in front of Congress in April 1971, after returning home from the Vietnam War. He was very disillusioned through his, by his service to the Vietnam, leading him to join a group called the Vietnam Veterans Against the War. And this group was formed in 67, consisting of those that had served in Vietnam that were now against the war. And again, he gave this speech in front of a congressional committee on April 23rd, 1971. Another interesting topic. Okay, the Fourth topic, the women's rights movement. This is basically discuss, uh, the founding document for the National Organization of Women. So it's good to get a little background on the National Organization of Women. It's an organization still around today that was formed in 1966 
And the formation of NOW was inspired by the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, 